Hello, welcome to How to Drink, and today we're doing some AI cocktails as I do the robot. A lot of controversy about AI right now in the world. I don't know enough to really have an opinion on this one, which is something you won't hear a lot of people say on the internet. I just don't. Hey, if you've been living under a rock, let me explain to you what these things are. ChatGPT is an AI that will build text from its brain. It'll write stuff for you, whatever you ask it to write for the most part. It's kind of insane. I asked it for a review of Basketball, the movie by Trey Parker and Matt Stone once, and it wrote a really good review of Basketball. Very fair, balanced review. Freaked me out. The other one is Mid Journey AI. Mid Journey makes art. It creates images from AI. Arguably, I think this is the more controversial of the two because it is trained on a library of every piece of art ever made, everything that's on the internet. We're gonna prompt ChatGPT and we're gonna use Mid Journey AI. In the case of ChatGPT, it'll feed me actual recipes. And in the case of Mid Journey, it's gonna make me an image that I have to interpret into a cocktail. I think we should just get started to my first prompt from ChatGPT. All right, Dennis, who is our main mod, our main man on our uh, Discord, wants one for Rick Deckard. I'm gonna change his wording slightly just because I know how. Invent for me an original cocktail that Rick Deckard would enjoy. Mm, you missed a couple. The Deckard stream, yeah, but it knew what I meant. See, it spelt it right in its reply. Uh huh. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. The Deckard stream: two ounces of bourbon whiskey, an ounce of dark rum, half an ounce of maple, two dashes of ango, quarter ounce of absinthe. Oh, man, I'm making that. That sounds cool. It says garnish with an orange peel, but tr enjoy while listening to Vangelis Blade Runner soundtrack. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Damn, ChatGPT, you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Holy shit. I think correctly that has to be garnished with a uh, paper crane. Oh, no, no, a paper unicorn. I don't know how to fold that, but I've got some paper cranes I did around here somewhere. <laughs> as Blade Runner-y as anything I have, this glass looks like a Blade Runner thing. It's actually, it's funny, it's a glass from Visky. Visky uh, reached out to us. They said they would like to be a sponsor of the show. I said, great, you make beautiful glassware. Why don't you do some glassware for us? And so if you wanted to pick it up, you can grab it from the link in the pin comp below or up here in the corner, whichever one it is. And by the way, if you use code how to drink 15, you'll get 15% off Visky glassware. They make beautiful glasses. I really like them. We're gonna have a lot more variety on the show in our glassware, thanks to Visky. So we need a mixing glass. Oh, I got my chippy today. I like that one. What do we got for bourbon, Mary? You picked the bourbon for me. Let's <laughs> go put four roses back there. We haven't used it in a Oh, while. yeah. A big handle of four roses <laughs> is perfect. We're going to add two ounces of four roses. One ounce of Plantation Original Dark. Double dark. This drink is going to be very dry. This is going to be one really stiff cocktail. <laughs> Deckard's got some demons he's dealing with, you know? He's... He's got some problems up there in his brain. A half an ounce of maple? Ooh, Shady Maple Farms, 100% pure organic. Only a half an ounce. It's a stiff cocktail. Two dashes of Ango, love it. We don't need the absinthe or the orange peel yet. I kind of don't want to do a quarter ounce. I want to do a spritz, but fine. A whole quarter ounce is do you think I should reinterpret that as a spritz? I think if you want to remake it your way, you can, but I think you need to make what AI says. Okay, we got to do what AI says. That's You're, you're not wrong. Okay, stir that, apparently. <laughs> well, the maple, yeah, you got to incorporate the maple. Now I put ice in it. Oops. Now I'm going to put some ice into this glass. said over ice. Uh, I interpret that to mean cracked ice. Now I'm going to probably ruin it with a quarter ounce <laughs> pour of absinthe. Just absolutely unhinged shit here. Well, you know, a quarter ounce isn't all that much. I'm going to give this a squeeze. I'm going to clean this thing up into a proper garnish. And there we have Deckard's Dream. If I was a real artist, I would somehow put a paper unicorn on there. Let's see how Deckard's Dream comes out. It's kind of cool, actually. It's got a whole transformative effect as smoke 
kind of is building on the top, this opalescent greenish white. It was clear a moment ago. Here we go. It's very absinthe, but it's also a lot better than you would expect. I was interested in ideas that would never occur to me, and this is one of them. This would never occur to me. I gotta go back in. Hold on. Licorice, a lot of licorice, a lot of anisette in a buttery kind of way. I have to assume that that is the effects of the absinthe interacting with the maple syrup because it's not without sweetness. It is not under sweet. I think I could stand to be a little sweeter on this. It's there. It's in the range of like an old fashioned in terms of sweetness. I'll tell you what though, much less absinthe. I think a spritz would have been perfect because you still would have gotten that effect if you built the drink first and then sp spritzed right down on top of it, you would have gotten that whitening of the top. But right now, really all I'm getting is absent. I'm kind of wondering, for science, I'm going to use a straw because I really want to know what it would be like without that absent. It's really good, actually. It's like buttery warm bananas with some malty bourbon-y, peanut-y kind of vibe. That's really good. I'm a little freaked out because the AI had some kind of good ideas here. A spritz of absinthe instead of a pour, way better. I don't really want to remake it though. I want to leave it alone. I know it would be better. I don't need to retaste it. I promise you, if you want to make this drink with a spritz instead of a pour, it'll be a thousand percent better. Right after this, we're going to move on to our next prompt. We're going to make another drink here on what does the AI want me to do now? Ooh. Whoa, the matrix. Why is happening? <laughs> Oh my God. I so Meredith, it was. Something not too sweet. An original. Cocktail. Cocktail, make sure I'm spelling this right. That yeah. isn't too sweet. And a little smoky. With but a, a touch of smoke. Is that it? And a cherry note. And cherry. Okay, so it's gonna make us some art right now. And the thing with Mid Journey is it's gonna make four and then we're gonna pick one to refine and upscale until we have something that really looks like an actual cocktail. Uh, although these are already starting out pretty good. Okay, what do we got here? We got Ooh. this one on the bottom right. <laughs> Fucking cool, man. <laughs> Holy shit, interesting. Okay, which one do you think is the most? Man, these are good. <laughs> I am disturbed now. <laughs> Fuck. Meredith, pick one to I gotta refine. go bottom right. Bottom right is even on like a little uh, right. wood, live edge wood coaster. All right, we're gonna up res the bottom right. Weird shit, guys. It's not up resing it, it's increasing the detail. It's redrawing it with more detail. Okay, we've got... It looks like cranberries almost. I was gonna say raspberries. Yeah. In there. It's probably better. It's red, it's blue. It's, I think it is mint on top, yes. And, oh shit, no, it's plants that are on fire on top. I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> it would be tricky to do that. It's like rosemary on fire. Yeah, and we got something that's growing out of over here. But you could do a, you could do a rosemary smoke inside the glass. Take it easy now. Don't, don't commit me to things yet now. All right. <laughs> I just, I'm the make of the cocktail. I think it's an ounce of cherry hearing, two ounces of bourbon, half an ounce of lime. Maybe simple, we're gonna work it a little bit in a glass with some smoked sage. Some sad looking sage. But we're gonna take the leaves. It's gonna take some doing to get this to burn. Sage smoke in our glass. Okay, we need a half an ounce of lime juice. I'm forgetting that this is a recipe that I interpreted and I can make it up as I go and not a recipe that a computer wrote. One ounce of cherry hearing two ounces of bourbon. And today we're going with the big old boy, um, four roses. And now I'm gonna taste what I got and see if it needs anything else. And then if it does need anything else, I'm gonna reference the image and see what else I'm allowed to put into it. Let's do a half an ounce of simple. And by half an ounce, I mean a whole ounce since this is a doubled recipe. better. Do we have any more toast? Right. Croutons! I can really do that. And I recognize that these aren't really croutons, they're just burned pieces of bread. Shut up. Let's shake it up. This drink will be an open pour, so I will crack all of my ice.
I think we want to add some frozen cherries to this drink, as Meredith was insisting, or as the image seems to imply. That might be too many frozen cherries, but whatever. And then we'll add our drink. So... It's not quite the same color, I apologize. We'll do a wee float of blue carousel. That looks about right. Next, we would like to have a lime wheel. Two of our little toasties on that lime wheel. We will soak it in, I guess, some of our four roses since we're already working with four roses here. And there we have I don't know, Meredith, what's this drink called? <laughs> flaming cherry. A flaming cherry. <laughs> a smoky cherry. Ooh, a smoky cherry. Foggy cherry. A foggy cherry? It keeps getting better. <laughs> I think I nailed it. It's nice. Maybe there should be like some sage coming out of the top of it or a piece of mint or something because there should be some, some kind of green up here. Yeah, now that looks about right. So we call it a smoky cherry? Foggy cherry. I'm gonna eat one of these frozen cherries. <laughs> that was one smoky fucking cherry. It's a pretty well-balanced drink. It falls into the tiki spectrum, I think. It has a cherry note. The bourbon is heavily mod moderated, but welcome. It's the right bourbon here. I think a, a fancier bourbon would be lost. I mean, wasted, I should say. This bourbon does disappear into the mix, but it's contributing. It provides a very lovely kind of base note. It brings in this malty sort of base note. And we get all of these brighter notes from the lime and from the cherry. And hearing, of course, also has some base notes in it. I don't know, I like this drink. The fire and the cinnamon is always welcome in this case. It is pretty, it is fun. I don't know that I would have made a drink that looks like this if I hadn't seen Mid Journey come up with it. So Mid Journey has a flair for the dramatic. Very dramatic, yes. Right after this, more AI cocktails coming at you. That computer show her wants to put me to bed. So we've got a Discord that our Patreon members use. Uh, and I just asked them for some cocktail prompts. Max suggests a cocktail that would make a grown man cry. Uh, so let's try that out. <laughs> Invent for me a cocktail that would make a grown man cry. I'm not sure I understand this request that for a cocktail that would make a grown man cry. Cocktails are meant to be enjoyed, not cause harm. Could you please provide more context or clarify what you mean? How about this? Try this. Invent for me a cocktail that is so good it would make a grown man cry. Oh, that's a great idea. Invent for me a cocktail that is so good it would move a grown man to tears. This one seems tired. It wears out very easily. Let's try some stuff on Discord again with Mid Journey. A cocktail that would make a grown man cry is on the way. Ooh. Ooh. What the hell? <laughs> There's a dude in that drink. <laughs> this one is unique. Again with the blue, always with the blue, yeah, the gradations in color. Okay. Mid Journey spit out this beautiful image. And I interpret that to mean two ounces of pineapple juice, half an ounce of Campari, maybe Chinola, maybe Malort for the crying. Two ounces of rum barbon court white, blue curacao float, and then I want to garnish that. It looks like there's Supremes in that. Supremes are citrus wedges that have had all of the pith removed, right? And you can do that with like a surgical scalpel or an X-Acto knife or tweezers, or you can use Pectinex SPL available from the Modern Alchemist Kitchen. Pectinex SPL is a pectin destroying enzyme. And so we're gonna make some Supremes right now. I've never really made Supremes before, so I felt like it would just be fun to make a whole bunch of Supremes and let's just do that. All right, so the first step to making these Supremes is to get yourself some water. I've got the water. Meredith, what a bizarre presentation. I've got the water. <laughs> I'm gonna peel this entire orange. Better bartenders than I would do a better job of what I'm doing right now. I wanna pull all of this pith off and then get to the orange inside. Very exciting content. Man peels orange. What a process. Okay, 
there's a ratio for doing what I want to do. It's like a few drops or grams per liter. But I want to do this fast, and I just saw them in a video, the people who make this saying, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you need it quicker, do it quicker. So we're just going to add a fairly large amount. And you know what? If you're buying this for yourself, you're going to shriek and say, boy, oh boy, was that expensive, that poor. But I do this professionally on the internet. I have a different cost-benefit analysis than you. I'm going to give that a quick stir, and we're just going to dump all of this stuff in there. And actually, over the course of this episode, we should see these things like the white fall apart. So that's it, it just takes the pith off. It takes all the pith off though. And uh, I'm just gonna set this up, I don't know, somewhere on set. How about right here? I have a recipe that I've worked up based on what I saw on here. Pineapple juice and Campari. I have written down maybe Chinola, maybe Malort. I'm thinking maybe Malort because we wanna make men cry. But we've already got Campari in there, that's already pretty big. You wanna make them cry tears of joy. Oh, tears of joy! Chinola it is then. So let's get it started. Two ounces of pineapple juice, half an ounce of Campari. This drink doesn't have much redness in the image, but it does have a little. Chinola. It's coming up a lot. It's the right color. I love passion fruit. Let's do half an ounce of Chinola. It's more like three quarters of an ounce because my hands are drunk. Two ounces of Barbancourt white. All right, at that point, I'm ready to shake. Shakery, dakery, do. Came out a little pinker than I expected it to. And now we're gonna see if we've got any decent Supremes. And these aren't quite done, but they're not bad either. Okay, drink is shook. We've got our Supremes. Oh my God. A little pink. We're gonna hit that with some mint. Maybe a little bit of crushed ice, since we have some. A float of blue curacao. Ooh, not so bad, actually. And then, I think you need a supreme or two up top. Maybe like a pick to hold it in place. What do you think, Mare? I nail it? Yeah, I mean, you got, actually, the blue helped to make the pink stuff a little more yellow, somehow. Here we go, a drink that'll make a grown man cry. All right. It's not my best work. The art was very hard to adhere to here. This is pretty tart. Needs a little sweetness. The pineapple's kind of overpowering. I screwed up. I screwed up. So let's add a half an ounce of simple. Of course, we've lost our color effect now. It's all just one kind of gray green slop. That makes it taste more like pineapple and stuff, but it's a bad drink. There was no way for me to figure out how to make it the right level of sweetness and the right level of like the other things without them being kind of in direct conflict. No. Mm. Well, that's that. All right, so I'm back and this is another one from our Discord, our Patreon Discord. Craig wants a cocktail called Bubbles Laying in the Grass. <laughs> Invent for me a cocktail called Bubbles Laying in the Grass. What's wrong with cocktail? I spelt it wrong. Invent for me a cocktail called Bubbles Laying in the Grass. Here's a recipe for a cocktail called Bubbles Laying in the Grass. Ingredients, two ounces of gin, an ounce of, uh, this is a cool idea. An ounce of elderflower, an ounce of lime, half ounce simple, two, three of orange, champagne or sparkling wine. Well, we're making that. That sounds fun. It's spring of time. Thank you, Craig. That's a great idea. <laughs> a lot of bottles back here, Meredith. There's, there's a lot going on in this episode. You're not kidding. Two ounces of gin. Two ounces of London dry gin. One ounce of elderflower liqueur. That's a lot of elderflower liqueur. My God, that's a lot. I usually say that like a spritz or a dash or a quarter ounce of this stuff like will take over a drink. I know what this drink's gonna taste like already. It's gonna be one elder flowery drink. An ounce of lime juice. Need to get back on that. Half an ounce of simple syrup. Orange bitters. Three dashes. Crack some ice into that bad boy. So the volumes of this drink that ChatGPT insists I use 
are gonna fill this thing like three times. And we wanna make sure we have room for our sparkling wine. So we're gonna stop about there. Unless I am woefully mistaken. I am woefully mistaken. The AI is right again. Jesus Christ. Ah, yes, Argyle. Room temperature Argyle, a fine vintage brew. Lime wheel and a sprig of thyme for garnish. Bubbles in the grass. It's not for me, but it's remarkably good. A lot of people would like that drink. I thought that the fucking St. Germain would be super overpowering. It's very mild. The gin is balanced. It's all very balanced. The orange, everything is expressing very well. I am distressed. It's got a very nice, very pleasant approach. It is warm. The drink has warmth in it that you would never expect. It is not overly sweet. It's not overly dry. It's not supremely tart. It is a drink in perfect harmony. What am I doing? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You get a little note of the time as you take a sip because it's right by your nose. I might like it better than a French 75, which is what it is. It's a variation of a French 75. This might be down to my choice of champagne, which is a uh, sparkling wine from Oregon. It's buttery. It's savory. It's a little sweet. It's herbaceous, but not really herby. It's a very nice drink. Meredith, do you want to try this? I'm a little sad for the AI. No, I'm sad for me, for the humans. You get to taste the cocktail. Oh, that's a fascinating approach. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, right after this, we're going to make another drink from the AIs. <laughs> okay, it's time to make another prompt. This time I'll pull it. A cocktail using unique ingredients that no one has ever seen before. Ready? Never been so ready for something in my life. <laughs> uh, shit, these are cool. Very fishbowl-y. Yeah, we should try to steer that away. It also keeps doing these two red and blue things. I'm interested in this top left one. We got like a snifter here. We got some kind of an amber color at the bottom. Definitely some kind of plant material, ice. And we got like a purple slushy on top and some fruit floating in it. There's smoke there, but I don't think that this drink wants to be smoked. I may ignore that part. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with two shakers for this. And in our first shaker, one lemon. It's like fruit ninja. We're gonna do half an ounce of this. And then I want a half an ounce of lime juice. Got our lemon lime combo. Base spirit here is gonna be cachaça. We're gonna use Nova Fogo Silver. Start with an ounce and a half. If we decide that we wanna go a little proofier, we can always do that. I wanna do a half an ounce of curacao. And now a half an ounce of chinola. I'm pretty into this. It's a little bit dry. I don't know if that matters though. I'm gonna make some crushed ice now, which I like to do on a concrete floor, so you're not gonna to get to see this. I'll be right back. <sighs> Him! I'm gonna add some uh, Gifford creme de violet to this shaker I just filled with some crushed snow-like ice. And I'm gonna add nothing else to that one. I'm gonna take some thyme and I'm gonna put it at the bottom of this glass like nothing I've ever made before. Thank you, AI. Now I'm gonna shake my drink and contact. Let that stand by. Now we're gonna put some crushed ice into this. There we go. Bury that in there. Then we're gonna put some cracked ice into there. I know, I know. It's just crazy talk, but. Now I wanna put in some mint in that area with the ice. This beautiful mint that we shocked. It was short about that. Um, and I'm just gonna put whole kind of sections of mint in there. Now I'm going to strain my drink into that. I think we actually might need a little bit more crushed ice. A little bit here. And now we're gonna shake the other part of our drink 
which is just nothing more than crushed ice and creme de violet. And if that works well, an openish gate should yield kind of a creme de violet slushy. How about an orange peel? A lemon peel? How do we do? Does it look right? If I, I turn it, you can it. see the, the, the stuff at the bottom there. I don't know. <laughs> the only thing we could do beyond that is set it on fire. Did that work at all? And here it is, a unique drink that no one's ever had before. Eminently drinkable. Bright, passion fruit, thyme, which goes together way better than you would expect. A little bit tart, not undersweet, not oversweet. Remarkably balanced. Wait a minute, this is a recipe that I wrote. Why wouldn't it be? But I am adhering to the appearance of the drink. And you know what's funny? You wouldn't think that you would get that violet all the way at the bottom of the drink, but you do. And it's nice. I actually kind of like it. Yeah. It lifts the whole drink. It lends a kind of floral element to it. Try this. I think it's cool. Ooh. <laughs> it's not bad, right? It's quite tart. I love I find it. it to be pretty balanced, but yeah, it is on the tartar end of the spectrum. I mean, I also think that the image there is way more purple slush. A little better. Yeah. All right. Uh, name it? It's something terrarium. Like, what's the, fa they call them fairy gardens? A fairy garden. Yeah. Yeah. A fairy garden is pretty good. It's like a tiki drink in the way it's built, but it's not a tiki drink. If we flooded it with Angostura bitters, we're going to take it right into tiki territory. Watch. Of course, this ruins the drink. Now we've got a red, tiki drink. purple, but. <laughs> oh, my God do that. Actually, it's funny because there's like a deep redness to yeah, the... Yeah, that's that's very close. <laughs> that's so good. This makes it a drink, and I think even a tiki drink. You could present it a little differently if you wanted to, but there's no reason to. And then, holy shit, does this drink have a long evolution. It's still going. It's cycling through the mint and the violet and the thyme, the passion fruit. I find that to be a huge improvement. Do that, but do it on the bottom so that you get the purple on the top if you're gonna make this drink. Well, we called it a fairy garden before, but now that it's a tiki drink, I think it needs a new name. A garden of earthly delights. <laughs> right after this, I'm on to another AI drink. Help me. Well, you got an idea for a prompt here? A variation on the last word that's never been done before. Okay. A unique variation on the last word cocktail. Something no one has ever seen before, please. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a minute. Here it goes. A unique variation on the last word cocktail could be the first word, which swaps out the traditional gin for mezcal and adds a touch of honey for sweetness. The recipe is as follows. An ounce of mezcal, one ounce of green chartreuse, an ounce of maraschino, and a half an ounce of honey syrup. That actually sounds cool. I want to try One that. One dash of absinthe. Oh. Oh, nice. That sounds fun. That does sound fun. We should try that one. <laughs> We're going to combine equal parts honey and water and stir them together. I got a scale because I don't really want to put honey into my jigger. It would get stuck. Beep, bop, boo, doo, doo. I'm going for like 30 grams of honey. 61 on the nose. It's just water, right? Mm -hmm. The scale keeps tabulating after you pour, so you gotta be careful with it. 61.2. Give that a good stir. Honey syrup. Why do we make a honey syrup? I hear you all asking that. First off, we're making it because the AI told me to. Secondly, we make it because it pours easier. One ounce of mezcal. What did you pick for me today on the mezcal? Oh, Cortez. Vetusto. In she goes. One ounce of green chartreuse. One ounce of maraschino. Because of course this is a variation on the last word. I need one half ounce of honey syrup. 
which we just made. A dash. I don't have a dasher full of absinthe at the moment. I've got a spritzer. Yeah, let's just spritz it. Here we go. All right, here we go. We're gonna strain. Garnish that with a lemon twist. Let's see if we can make that into something pretty. All right, let's try this. This is a first word. The sweet and the mezcal is what really comes through. It is a round, sweet mezcal. It's not unlike uh, Del Maguey Crema de Mezcal. Pretty similar. I don't know that the chartreuse is cutting through at all, which is weird. The chartreuse is potent. That's really it. Not a bad drink, kind of a dud. I would say that you could probably replace the chartreuse with water. Has a, I mean, and this is the mezcal. It has like a kind of burning leather, acrid note. Up front, there's a brief kind of skunk note. So I don't know where to put this. <laughs> a lot more successes here than failures, which is surprising because I really thought this was gonna be an episode about me drinking bad things. Which one was your favorite? Ooh. Bubbles laying in the grass when I added Angostura to it became my favorite drink. Bar none. Yeah. It was fantastic. But it did take a little uh, human ingenuity, you know? Human input. I had to throw those Angostura bitters in there. Mine was bubbles in the grass. Oh, really? You liked oh, that better yeah. than the other one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Nothing here was so bad that I wanted to spit it out. They weren't just like chaotic, insane drinks. They were all okay drinks. You'd expect, you know, a computer to spit out cocktails that were garbage. That kind of disturbs me. With that thought, this has been How to Drink, the show about cocktails and how to make them. I'm Greg, she's Meredith. We have been standing here in the bar for two whole days making this episode, and I am very drunk. So thank you so much for watching. Good night, good luck. I will see you next week with another episode of How to Drink. In the meantime, you will find me on the social media places now appearing before your very eyes. And if you want to see more of the show because you're new to it and you haven't been around very long, here are four more places that you can check it out. You'll see a whole lot more How to Drink because this show has been on since you were a baby. Thank you so much. See you guys next time on another HTD. Good night, good luck, goodbye.